What's going on everybody? In this video, I'm going to do one of the best parts of software engineering, and that is writing tests. I know a lot of people don't like the sound of that, but it's very important to do if you're working on a serious application. So in this video, we're going to do exactly that. I'm going to run you through on how we're going to write some basic tests for our GraphQL schema, and it's just going to get us warmed up for if we ever want to write more complex tests. So the first thing that we need to do is install some dependencies. So in our case, we're going to be running our test using Jest, the test runner, and we have to configure it to be able to run in TypeScript and in Node.js. So we're going to run uh, or install some dependencies that does that. First of all, we need uh, TS Jest and they have a new version coming out. And I'm, so I'm going to put at next. But if you're watching in the future, you probably most likely do not need to put at next. I'm just putting that uh, because they fixed a bug uh, recently. So we need that. We also need Jest, the test runner. We need the types for Jest. And I'm pretty sure that's all we need. So let's go ahead and install those dev dependencies. So now that we have those dependencies installed, we're going to configure Jest to do those things that I just mentioned previously. So to do that, we're going to create a file called jest.config.ts. And in here, we're just going to need an object. We can call it config. And we need to do um, basically export it by default because Jest is going to pick up this file when we pass in. It's going to pick up this object when we pass in the path to this file when we're running Jest. So here, we're going to uh, put in our configuration for Jest. And in order to make it type safe, we need to actually import the type for this. So I'm going to do that right here. So import type config from at jest slash types. So now here we can just make this config dot initial options. And then now we can set our preset to be TS jest and our test. Ooh, what is that? Our test environment to be node. So now that's exactly what we need. So now let's create an NPM script, which is going to run just for us. So I'm just going to make a script here in our package JSON called test. And it's just going to run just and pass in the config environment variable. And we're just going to pass in the name of our config file that has this default export like that. And then you can pass in nothing and it will just run any test it finds in your whole project. Or you can be a little bit more specific and pass in a directory where your tests are all located. It's better to do this because just sometimes runs files that it thinks are tests, but they're not really tests and it's better to keep things organized. So we set up that script. So let's just go ahead and create the file where our tests are going to be located. And ooh, I opened something by accident. Okay, so let's just make a file and I'm going to call it healthcheck.ts. And in this file, I'm going to do exactly what I called it. I'm just going to do a health check against our GraphQL schema. So to do that, we're going to first of all need to import the instance of Apollo server where our schema is located at, where we can run our operations on our schema. So here, I'm just going to import our server from our source directory lib Apollo server like that. So now we can run operations against our GraphQL schema. And actually, we're not going to be using HTTP to run those requests. Luckily, Apollo server has some built in functions that you can do something called execute operation and it just runs an operation against your schema, not even over the wire. It's just automatically just runs through it. No network uh, connections required. So now let's actually start writing our test and we can just write a function called it and it takes in a string and a callback. So the string will be us describing the test to the best of our ability and as concise as we can. And the callback is our actual test and what's going to run in our test. So here we're going to do runs a health check against our GraphQL schema. And so here we're just going to run our test. So what we want to do is we want to run uh, a query that we had set up in previous videos. And that query is here. 
is really just a, qu a query that takes in an argument, a Boolean argument. And the query is called test. So it takes in a Boolean and it just returns to you whatever you pass it in. So if you pass in the Boolean true, it returns true. If you pass in false, it returns false. I'm just getting rid of these uh, unnecessary lines here. So we're going to use this query to run a health check on our GraphQL schema. So let's do const result is equal to await, because we're going to do a uh, asynchronous operation here. Await server.execute operation takes in an object and we pass it in a query and this is just a string and we can make it a GraphQL screen, uh, string sorry like that so now we can just do query test boolean is false pretty simple and so now we're gonna be receiving some data from our schema and we want to make sure that we've first of all received data and that the data is what we expect it to be so what we can do here is we do expect because we expect our result to basically be truthy, which means it's not null, it's not undefined. It has something, we receive some data back. We also expect our result to have a, a property called data because we're using Apollo server. Uh, it returns to us an object that has the field data and the field errors, if there are any errors. So we expect to have some data back um, from this uh, query right here. And we also expect it to not have any errors. So we want the errors, we want errors to be falsy. So that means errors would be undefined if there were no errors. And we want to make sure that that is how it went. We want to make sure there were no errors that went on because this is a typical query. Nothing should have went wrong. So we've tested that we got data. There's no errors. We want to make sure that we have re we've gotten a false return from this uh, resolver here. So we can do expect result dot data dot test to be to equal false. And we can do this, right? So we expect data dot test because that's the query we ran to be false. And if it is false, that means everything worked fine. Now, on the contrary, we can also run a test that makes sure that our schema throws errors whenever it has to throw one. So we're going to do something very similar here, except we want errors to be truthy. And here we want to pa pass an invalid argument. So this is not a Boolean, it's an invalid argument. Therefore, our GraphQL schema should take note of that and throw an error. Now, this is not an exactly rigorous test, but I'm just trying to show you the basics. And this is pretty useful. It's just a little health check that it's always good to have, right? So we have this test and let's actually create another test here. And one really important thing that we can test is we want to make sure that we are testing the server side validation. So we have some forms on our front end and users can try to log in and it submits that data to our back end. We want to make sure that our validation is working as we expect it to. So here we want to test it should validate user info correctly. So we're just checking our server side, uh, server side form validation here. So we do something similar, const result is equal to await server dot, oops, server dot, execute operation query, and it's a GraphQL uh, string here, here, and we do mutation, and we're gonna run the login mutation, and it takes in some credentials. So I'm gonna check over here that I'm doing everything right, over here, login. It takes in an object that has credentials. So we can do credentials is an object. And that object over here has email, username, and password. Okay. So here we will pass an email. And in this case, it will be an empty email, an empty username, and an empty password. Or we can do a valid password, or I mean a valid username. Uh, valid email and then no password so 
we should get an error back because there was no password supplied. So we can test out the result that we received here. So we expect to actually get a result. So we expect that to be truthy. But we also expect result dot errors to be truthy. Like so, and this has to be asynchronous. There we go. And so yeah, these are two pretty solid tests. Uh, we could do better tests, we could make this better, but this serves the purpose of just a quick demonstration. So now we're actually gonna run our test and it's pretty simple. All we gotta do is run the command yarn run test and it's gonna run our test. So there you go, it's running the health check file. And there we go, just ignore these warnings, that's not important, but here we see pass and two check marks along with the description of our test. So now let's run a bad test that should not work or let's make it fail on purpose. So let's say that we expect there to be no errors, right? So we expect this to be falsy. So we don't expect any errors from this operation. Let's say that we want users to log in with no password that that's fine with us, right? So let's, let's uh, see that there's no errors here. Now this test will fail because our backend does give an error and we're checking to see that there's no errors. So I'm writing a test that will fail just so I can show you how it looks when, when these tests fail. So it's running the test here. And there we see it failed. It gives us a description of which test it was and even the statement that failed. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. And by the way, let me know of any content you're trying to see. Leave a comment down below and I'll definitely take a look at it. So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.